Cryptorchidism is a very fancy term for when a cult has uh, one or both testicles that are not uh, fully descended into the scrotum. Uh, one of the things that we uh, do when we examine horses at the sales is to see whether they have two normal testicles descended into the scrotum. And uh, cryptorchidism can be unilateral or bilateral, meaning that one or both testicles may not be present in the scrotum, and they're, they're either then in the inguinal ring or up in the abdomen. And so uh, we commonly refer to those horses as ridgelings, and they need to be announced at the sale. And the reason that it would be important is because some of these colts may end up running extremely well and therefore may qualify as stallion prospects. And so it's an important question to be answered if they have the reproductive capability of having two testicles. Uh, and also, uh, if a horse only has one normal testicle, that doesn't preclude it from being a successful breeding stallion. AP Indy and a number of other very successful stallions have, have bred for many years with one normal testicle. It's relatively common. I wouldn't say that it's uh, uh, that that you would find it on every other horse. I can't give you an exact percentage, but at any given sale, uh, if I'm if I'm out in the morning uh, scoping and examining horses uh, on a pre-sale basis, it wouldn't be unusual in a group of 30 horses that I'm examining to find one or two or so of those of Ridgelings. Uh, yes, it is hereditary, um, and typically uh, it, it, it can be seen in certain uh, lines of horses, but it wouldn't, even though it's hereditary, it wouldn't be considered a significant hereditary defect in thoroughbred horses because of their capability to uh, fully cover a book of mares with one normal testicle. There have been many attempts at treating it or fixing it, but the fact is usually by the time they've reached the age of two years old, if, there's, if one of the testicles is small and either up in the belly or in the inguinal ring, the likelihood of it descending and being normal is almost zero. So um, what I typically do though, um, that, that would not be a factor for any of my clients in terms of not purchasing a horse unless it was a bilateral condition where the horse had no normal testicles. But typically what I do is I advise, if some, one of my clients buys a crypt orchid, a Ridgeling, uh, I will advise them to have the abnormal small testicle located and surgically removed uh, because it can be a potential source of discomfort for the horse in its hind end. And they wouldn't necessarily be overtly lame, but they could just be uncomfortable enough to maybe not be able to um, uh, have their full uh, potential realized as an athlete. No, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't really lower their potential to be at stud, but uh, typically we can actually measure the size of testicles and knowing the number of live uh, progressively modal sperm that it takes to fertilize an egg, we can predict with some degree of accuracy how many mares a stallion would be able to cover in a season. So obviously if you cut that number in half by only having one viable testicle, it is going to potentially reduce the number of mares that that horse could breed. And of course, the value of a potential stallion, a stallion prospect, is predicated upon how many mares that horse might be able to cover. So it could potentially affect the, the value as a stallion prospect. Yes, I, uh, again, um, there's, there's nothing that would preclude a horse from being a successful racehorse just based upon that. However, as I said before, um, there are many Ridgelings that are running uh, without any surgical intervention to remove the testicle and they seem to be fine. But to me, it just removes a one risk factor as far as something that would make a horse uncomfortable. So I typically would recommend that that up testicle be removed. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that they're necessarily more studdish, but uh, there are some personality traits that seem to go along with some Ridgelings that are undesirable, and it does seem like that you can positively impact that sometimes by removing that testicle. Uh, it's not across the board, it's not every horse, but uh, 
you know, if you can imagine that if a horse has some discomfort behind because of a testicle uh, issue, that removing that issue would certainly not only make the horse more comfortable in terms of training, but might make them um, have a more relaxed personality. Uh, crypto orchids don't have any less libido, um, but as I mentioned earlier, because uh, we're looking at the, the total uh, volume of viable testicle, uh, so naturally when you decrease that, you decrease the number of live sperm and therefore the number of mares that can be legitimately covered in one season. So, so uh, and, and I say that, that's relatively speaking. I mean, we all know that AP Indy and the other stallions that you've mentioned have covered full books for years. But um, when you're talking sometimes about, uh, uh, well, of course, as you know, the Jockey Club has recently limited the book um, of stallions going forward. But when, when a stallion traditionally has been breeding up to 250 mares a year, that uh, being a crypt orchid could definitely impact that.